Let's see how to insert holes into curved beams. All we need to do is shift-click the beam to select it, and then click its reference line once to display the pet palette. Let's select the Insert Hole in Beam option from the pet palette. The Beam Hole Settings dialog opens, providing various options for the parameters of the holes. We can define the shape as well as the size and position of the holes. After clicking OK on this dialog, the hole will be instantly created where the reference line of the selected beam was clicked. Additional holes can also be added. Existing holes can be dragged and repositioned within the selected beam, but additional copies can also be created using the drag, multiply, or distribute commands or their keyboard shortcuts. Let's select one of the holes and open the Beam Selection Settings dialog from the info box. As you can see, holes have a dedicated page within this dialog. Now a hole is selected, so the other pages of the dialog are inactive. Here, the size, position, and shape of the selected hole can be modified. Let's switch to the 3D view and select the curved beam again. Let's display the beam selection dialog once again and note that now all pages are active because we've selected the entire beam instead of the hole in the beam. Also, please note the exclamation mark on the hole page of the dialog. This means that the beam contains more editable holes and modifying these parameters will affect all the holes. Let's enter a new value for the hole position and notice that the position of all the holes are instantly updated in the 3D view. Here you can see three identical beams on the floor plan. Each beam has two holes. Let's start to change the geometry of the first beam and create a curved beam with the help of the pet palette. Before completing the operation, the Beam Holes Position dialog appears, and we must decide if we wish to keep the distance or the proportions of the holes after changing the beam's geometry. Let's select the Keep Distance option, and notice that the distances of the holes, measured along the reference line of the beam from its endpoint, were not changed. We can prove this by inserting a new dimension line along the reference line of the beam. Let's create a curved beam from the second beam using the same radius value as before. Let's select the Keep Proportion option in the Beam Holes Position dialog this time. The original proportion of the holes, the distance between the endpoint of the reference line of the beam compared to the distance between the holes, was kept. We can also prove this by inserting a new dimension line along the reference line of the beam.